Hey guys, welcome to the show. Now, people always ask me, Yo Ash, I just got a brand new 16 incher and I wanna know if I got a good one or a bad one. How the hell do I test it out to make sure that I got a good CPU, bad CPU? What should I be looking for? All that kind of good stuff. And what I'd say to you guys out there, honestly, get Apple Care and forget about it. You're gonna, you're gonna get your brain wrapped up in all these little micro issues that, to be honest, you don't really need to be thinking about. You just wanna be using these computers to get work done because by the time you've made sure you have the perfect unit and all that kind of stuff, you know, your unit's out of date and you're gonna be obsessing over the next one. So just forget about it and get Apple Care. But if you are those kind of like, me kind of people, you know, the people that really love these systems. I'll tell you a, a few tips that I did and do with my system to make sure I got a good one. I got wrapped up in this whole debacle of making sure my unit is good. Once when I bought a 2018 MacBook Pro, I got the maxed out, specced out model. It cost me 10,000 Australian dollars. And then I watched a video from Talio Tech. He was called Western Gents back then. And he was telling me his system had a mark on it in the back. So I checked the back of my unit and I had a scratch right there on the back. And I was dismayed. I was like, yo, what's going on? I'm depressed. Apple, what's going on? I called them up and they actually gave me a free magic mouse. Compensation that had a scratch in it. And they even sent me a brand new unit for a replacement. Anyway, step one, what I say is, Take a nice little inspection of it. Make sure it looks good. Just, you can see right here, this guy looks all right. It seems, everything seems straight and all that stuff. You might think, yo Ash, you know, it's gonna, not gonna be bent, is it? And then sometimes it is, like I said, it is. So let's look at the system. Take a note of the serial number. It's gonna be right there. Look at this, make sure all the lines are nice and straight. Like you see, I got a mark here myself because you know, I've been banging it around using the system as it is to be used. Make sure this, this is straight. You might be thinking, yo, Ash, Apple don't release you laptops which aren't straight. No, no, they can be bent. Open it up. You know, take a look at this system. Just make sure it looks kind of good. Play with the keys a little bit. Play with the touch. You know, it's going to work. To be honest, look at it. Make sure the screen comes on. All right. Make sure that you can turn on the actual screen because right now you can see that my screen isn't working. If you run into these issues where the screen won't turn on, that's a clearly a major failure, but you can just hold down the power button right here and turn it back on. And I think you need to wait a couple of seconds before turning it back on. Apple's a bit weird. They don't like letting you know if it's on or off or what the hell to do. You go, what? What's that? <laughs> the screen on this MacBook Pro is broke up already. All right, so let's get to the actual testing of the system out. The first thing I do is I usually wait a little while for my computer to finish doing all the default processing that it does when you first get it. And once that's done, I check up Activity Monitor and Activity Monitor has all the processes that are currently running on your system. So you wanna sort by CPU, just like that. And you can see right now, Activity Monitor itself is the highest task, which means you don't wanna be using Activity Monitor when you're doing the tests. But everything else, look at that, it's on the zeros. So nothing is actually taking up system resources. So this is a good time to do your tests. If you do see dodgy applications on there, for example, maybe you're doing a time machine backup, or maybe it's indexing all the files you have on your system when it first runs, just wait for it to finish. And then once it's finished, you're happy. Now, if you are using other monitoring tools, for example, iStat menus, that seems to be a popular one, this actually slows down your system as well. So if you are dead certain on using this application, put it the update frequency all the way down to very slow or just, you know, don't run it. Just pause it in the meantime and quit it so it doesn't hog your resources. Next up, go on the internet and you want to search for Synbench R20. Now make sure you download R20 and not any other version. Get it from maxon.net, download directly and you want to get version R20. There is, you know, going to be an R21, all that kind of stuff. You kind of want R20 because that's the stats that are publicly available. So just hit download for that, get a DMG and extract it, put it in your applications folder, and then launch Synbench R20. And now that everything isn't running in the background, you can even, for safety, turn off Wi-Fi to get 
the most amount of mileage you can get in your system. Wait until the fan noise has cooled down just to make sure your system is as cool as possible. If it's already at a heated up state, it's not gonna perform as good. So I'm gonna hit run right here. So the Synbench test is gonna run and it's gonna do its thing. On this system, this is the six core i7 model. I get around 2600 without an external monitor being plugged in. When I have an external monitor, it slows down the system a little bit. And on my i9 8 core, the 2.4 gigahertz version, I get around 3,300. I've seen other people get 3,500 a lot faster than mine. Personally, I wouldn't obsess too much about this score as long as it's within 10% of the scores I just gave you. So if it's not below 2,400 on a 6 core, 16 incher, whoa, that got 2,300 right there because I'm using an external display. Just remember that. So it doesn't, if it doesn't get below 2,400 when you're just using a standard system, and on the i9, if it doesn't get below 3,000, 3,100, I wouldn't worry too much about it because I myself, my last 15 inch up, it got a really good score on Synbench and then a few months later, it just died on me. So I'd probably be more concerned about having a reliable system rather than a super fast system that dies on you a few months later. So there you go on this system, the i7, with an external monitor plugged in, I got a score of 2,327 and it's currently Fan Noise City. This is something that happens when you have an external display plugged in. For faster scores, you can always disconnect the external display and only use the internal display and it will run faster because Macs have this ability in system preferences. If you go inside Power Management Energy Saver, it has automatic graphics switching. What that means is if you're not using an external display or playing a game or anything that uses free graphics, it's going to turn off the GPU and it's only going to use the CPU to render out the screen and that allows it to run cooler and faster. But of course, you know, if you need to use an external display because your current display has died on you, then uh, that's what you got to do, isn't it? That's life. Now, that is kind of like monitoring the CPU. You can run that test a few times just to make sure you got a good one. The scores should not fall way too low when you're playing with it. It should stay around the same within around 10%. If it goes all the way down to 500 or 1,000 or anything silly like that, you probably got a dodgy CPU and you need to get that checked up on. Next thing I want to show you is something called Intel Power Gadget. Now this is official software from Intel. You just download it right there for macOS. Now note, if you don't need to install this software, don't install it because it has been known to cause crashes on your macOS. It's actually crashed my system once in the history of using it about a million times, but it is possible to crash your system. That's why Intel's constantly installing updates to it. For example, this is 3.7.0. So that means probably there's gonna be an incremental update coming soon to fix a bug. Whereas the version I've got installed right now is 3.6.1. The point one means that they fixed the bug. The point six means they've done a six important feature and the version three means it's the third major version of the app. So I've downloaded it, the DMG is right there. There's a few hurdles you need to jump over, but in essence, you double click that PKG file, hit continue, continue, agree, install, throw in your password. And then halfway through, it's gonna say, hey, we need some extra verification to get this installer done. When it does that, you wanna go into system preferences over here. You wanna go inside security and privacy. And then a magical button's gonna appear here. It's gonna say, hey, we've noticed Intel's trying to install some software. Do you allow this? Now, right now, it's not appearing on my system because I've previously allowed it, but basically, it's gonna appear there when this guy gets stuck long enough. If it doesn't appear there, close the window, go to System Preferences, open it back up again, and eventually, that magical button is gonna appear. Once the installation is successful, it will either allow you to continue to install it if you've already installed the drivers, which I have in a previous run, so it hasn't asked me again, or it'll ask you to restart the system. You'll see it appear inside applications, Intel Power Gadget. There you go, latest version of Intel Power Gadget and it's got features, city. Look at that, look at all these different options. You've got core max, core average, core min, core requested. That's how much the operating system is asking for. The graphics card in the CPU, letting you how much it's using, oh, the temperature of the CPU, all this kind of stuff. So next time now you run Synbench R20, you can see, look, you can monitor the actual actual usage of the CPU. So you can see my CPU is shot all the way up to 70. Probably talking to you about too much stuff, but basically when you run this test, you're gonna see the core of your CPU. And the idea is you wanna look at probably the average. The average is the best one to look at because the maximum one is the fastest core. Here I've got six cores, so the fastest core is going 3.2. The average is going 
3.2 still and the slowest score it was going 2.3 and then it shot to 3.2 but on average my cpu right now is going 3.3 gigahertz which is above the base clock of the system now the base clock of this system is 2.6 gigahertz because the i7 model the i9 comes in two flavors you got the 2.3 gigahertz model and the 2.4 gigahertz model the lowest the core average should be and the core min should be should be around 2.3 you can get slower than 2.3 performance you can go all the way down to 1.4 ideally it wouldn't be a good case if it goes down to 1.4 that means there's some serious heat happening in your system really it drops the lowest i've seen it to 2.1 now the reason why it does this is that these computers only have around 96 watts to play with and that means it needs to pump that 96 watts to the cpu which likes to eat up around 72 watts of power even up to 90 watts of power and the GPU, which likes to eat up 50 watts of power. So the operating system, Mac OS, is constantly saying, I've only got 96 watts. I'm gonna give some to the GPU and some to the CPU. I'm gonna give more to the CPU and less to the GPU. I'm gonna give more to the GPU and less to the CPU. So when it gives more to the GPU, it's got less to the CPU, which means it can slow down your CPU blower than base clock speed. It only does this in extreme circumstances, but there will be cases where you can see your clock speed go below base. For example, right now, mine has gone down to 1.5, <laughs> but it's only gone down to 1.5 because the CPU isn't being used. So something to look at here is, you wanna look at your utilization versus the speed you're getting. So for example, if I'm going 1.5 on average, but my utilization is one or four, that means it doesn't need the extra cores, so it's turned off some of the cores and it's only using one or two cores with the Core Max to drive this computer. All right, so we've got some sort of monitoring for our CPU and we've tested out our CPU using Synbench. This is probably the best test I always use. I don't use Geekbench, that one's a bit silly, but Synbench is the way to go to see how good your CPU is. The next test I do, I use Unreal Engine to test out my CPU and GPU at the same time. And then if you download Epic Games Launcher. You get this from epicgames.com. So you click Unreal Engine here, you go to library, and you press plus and install the latest version of Unreal Engine. So if you go into learn, if you just scroll down right to the bottom, there's a couple of examples you can get. So there's vehicle game, if you just install that one, or shooter game, that's a good demo to run. And once it's downloaded, just double click it to launch Unreal Engine. And it will start bouncing the icon over there. It takes a good few minutes to launch, but you just let it do its thing. And as you can see, look right now, the CPU is going 4.1 gigahertz. It's, it's hitting it hard. I'm not gonna allow any incoming firewall connections, but eventually it's gonna load the editor up. And the idea is you want this process to be an intensive process. If you're on Cinebench, it's too short. If you're on Geekbench, it's too short. So it won't exhibit the issues straight away. But right now the editor loads up and it's not doing much at this moment. You can press Command Shift H to show you the frame rate, to show you how fast it's going. But because all the shaders have been compiled, I quit it and then inside Finder, you wanna go inside Library here. So if you click on Go, then go to Folder. You wanna go inside Library. So it's tilde forward slash Library. And once you're in there, you wanna go into Application Support, Epic, and then delete the Unreal Engine folder. That clears out all of the shaders. So next time you launch vehicle game, it's now gonna start compiling shaders. And this demo has over 2000 shaders to do. So it takes a good few minutes to complete. And you can see my temperature is 99 degrees. My core utilization is 97 degrees. And if you let finish compiling the shaders, then quit Unreal Engine, go back into Finder again, then delete the Unreal Engine folder only when it completes. Then next time you launch it, you'll start recompiling the shaders. And I did this around four times and that managed to throttle the CPU down in the store. It only happened because of my, because my system had a fault in it. So if I try doing it on this 16 inch chart, it works completely fine. So that right there are the main two tests I do to test out my systems, CPU and GPU. There are loads of other fun tests you can do. There's Heaven, a great, great application that's really out of date. So you put the preset to extreme and you hit run and it's gonna go ahead and launch this engine and it's gonna give you a frame rate indicator. So right now my system's going 33 frames a second. Yeah, your system should be doing that 
or faster. If it goes like 10, that means you've probably got an older system or you've got a problem with your system. Another test you can run is disk speed test. Blackmagic, it's on the App Store, so that's easy to get. And then you just hit start and you're gonna get speeds of around 3000 MBS. I'm getting right now 2700 and 2800. If you're thereabouts there, I've seen speeds around 2,500, a bit slower, 2,000 sometimes, but as long as you don't get 500 or 1,000, you're doing a good job in your system. Other things to check out, the obvious, listen to it, make sure the speakers are good, look at it, make sure the monitor's working. All right, mine isn't working, but yeah, I'm using an external display for now. Make sure the monitor's working, and then enjoy the ride. These systems are made for use and abuse, I know. They're expensive and I know you want them to last a long time, but my recommendation to you, get Apple Care Plus. It is worth it. In my case, my screen's damaged, so I'm gonna have to get it repaired. If I was gonna re repair the screen with Apple, it'd cost me a lot of money, but because I'm kind of insured, it's gonna be a lot cheaper for me. So get Apple Care Plus and yeah, you can run these tests, get a bit of a feel of how your system is. Intel Panel Gadget is there. Personally, if you don't need it, just don't install it because it's just an extra piece of bloat which will slow your system down ever so slightly, an extra piece of bloat which may crash your system. You get all those YouTubers online, they're always complaining, oh my system's crashing, T2, T2, but they never think to question, could it be an application that I installed on my system which could be doing it? Could, be, could it be an external peripheral? Like for example, if you've got any dodgy stuff plugged in, I've had cases where I've had an eGPU, as soon as I've plugged in the eGPU, it starts crashing up my system, left, right and center. It's just the nature of the beast, they design it, for nothing really. They just design it not to be used. If you start using it with all this extra stuff, it can start crashing your system. But yeah, these are the basic tests you can run and hope you found this video useful. I guess the one thing I'd like to tell you guys, just make sure you always check Activity Monitor at the beginning of the show before you start testing, just to make sure your system isn't being utilized and then do your test then. And if your score is like 10% lower than the amazing scores Talio Tech gets and all your other internet mates, then don't worry about it because in my case, when I had a super fast system, three months down the road, it just burnt up on me. So you probably want to look at a reliable system rather than something that just goes slightly faster than the next system. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know what kind of amazing Synbench scores you guys get in the comment section below and I hope you guys enjoyed the show.